You're listening to the Fed and Fearless podcast. On today's episode, I'm chatting with Josh Coates about how to create and sell your first course so you can scale your business and your income. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Laura Schoenfeld, a registered dietitian, nutrition business coach, and online entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience in online business. And I'm here to show you everything I've learned about creating a life and a business that nourishes you. On this podcast, we'll talk about the lifestyle habits, practical strategies, mindset shifts, and leaps of faith required to build a healthy body, a powerful mind, a strong spirit, and a successful business. Hey there, welcome back to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Laura Schoenfeld, and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today's episode is another one of my amazing mastermind colleagues, and we're going to be talking about creating your first course. And it's something that my guest today and I have both been doing for seven years now, and we've done everything that you could think of, both wrong and right, to be able to sell our courses effectively. And so our conversation today is really going to center around how to get started with a course and how to make sure that it's actually going to sell when you want to launch it, because there's nothing worse than spending a ton of time and energy creating a course and designing all the marketing for it and then trying to sell it to people that don't want it. So it's really, really important that your course is designed to be exactly what your ideal clients want, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So Josh Coates is my guest, and he is a two-time number one bestselling author, top 50 podcast host, and founder of the Push Coach Certification School for Life Coaches. Josh has trained over 40,000 people in his online trainings and specializes in mindset, leadership, and strategy. As a student of mindset and a founder of a life coach school, Josh will help you dig into the beliefs that are holding you back in your sales and leadership. And like I said, today's conversation is very practical. He gives a very specific call to action for you to take after the episode if you want to start your course. So I'm really excited for you to learn from him. And please let both of us know if you end up taking action on what you learned today, because I'd love to hear how our conversation affected you. So without further ado, here is Josh Coates. All right, everyone. Well, I am so excited to have with us on the show today, Josh Coates. Welcome to the Fed and Fearless podcast, Josh. Hi, friend. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so excited to chat with you today. And for our audience who doesn't know you yet, I would love a quick intro to you, um, other than the official intro that I shared uh, before this conversation. I would just love for you to share, how did you become a course and program expert when it comes to creating and scaling online courses? Um, Through a lot of failure. (laughs) (laughs) It's usually how we do it, right? Yeah, so... Actually, um, I became a life coach in 2014. Um, I had been playing in rock bands on the weekends, detailing cars for a living, um, was really, really, really broke uh, my whole 20s. I had three kids at the time. Now I have four. Um, And basically, I was just like so sick and tired of like just basically getting by. And I was committed. I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I don't know what it's going to take. I have no idea what it's going to take. I'm going to do whatever it takes to give my kids a better life. Um, I started to realize that like, okay, if I'm having money issues at like 30, because my parents had money issues, what is this doing to my kids if I don't fix something? And so that was kind of the motivation. Um, I started doing a lot of personal growth via podcasts like this one. I, I was literally listening to any and every podcast I could get my hands on. And I fell in love with personal growth and was like, John Maxwell had this like certification that was actually, it wasn't a true life coaching certification. It was actually more of like a leadership certification that like had like a life coaching element to it. And I had no desire to do life coaching. I was just like, I just want to, I came from like a long line of preachers so I could see how like motivational speaking could maybe like be a thing. Like I wasn't really sure. Um, so I signed up for that, ended up falling in love with the life coaching process, like loved it so much. I was like, this is the most powerful thing I've ever found in my life. And I want to do it forever. 
And so that's what I started growing was a life coaching business. But I got to a point where it was like, okay, well, A, nobody told me what to charge. B, I wasn't doing contracts. So I was working with like 30 one-on-one clients making like $3,000 a month. (laughs) Was not charging enough money at all, obviously. Um, And I was just like, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. Like, I can't take on more clients or I'll have to quit my job, but I'm not making enough money to quit my job. So that's when I was having coffee with a dude and he's like, you just need to create something that you can sell to the masses. And I had like 24 ounces of cold brew in my system and got caught in stuff uh, like in, in rush hour on the way home. And by the time I got home, I had a whole course planned out and I didn't know courses were a thing. I'd never heard of that. This was like, 2015, and I'm sure lots of people were doing them, but I wasn't aware of that. Not, so, not a ton, because that's where I feel like that was the year I really got started with my first course. And mm-hmm. for sure, there's a lot more now than there was back then. Yeah, like no one was really teaching it back then though, right? Like it was just like, maybe we like had an idea for something that we wanted to teach. And so we were just like, oh, I don't know. Like maybe I'll see if people want to like learn this from me. It wasn't like, oh, five steps to getting your first 5K. Like th- that stuff didn't exist. So mm-hmm. I just wrote out an outline for it. Um, I was working with a lot of people in like the network marketing space at that time. And so I was just like, do you think you guys would be down to put on like a team call for me and just let me like pitch my new program? And they were like, yeah, that would be great because we would love for our team to learn from you too. They currently can't do that. So we got like 120 people on a Zoom call. And, and I made like eight grand in like three days. And I was just like, what just happened? <laughs> like well, that. especially if you're doing 3K a month. Yes, exactly. Going so, to 8K in a few yep. days is a huge jump. Yeah. So from there, I was able to quit my job. I was able to raise my one-on-one prices because I didn't need them as bad. Um, and then from there, it kind of just became like, that was my thing was, you know, I worked with one-on-one people, but that was more like, really, really intentional. Like if I really wanted to work with you because you had really big goals and you had a lot of influence, you know, you know what I mean? Like someone that was like, I kind of became the guy who like, like if like I'm recruiting an all-star team over here, not looking to just like work with anyone. And then my Mm -hmm. courses was as my following grew, like anyone could come over here to learn from me. And, and that's still kind of, I don't really work with one-on-one people like at all anymore. Um, other than like bonuses for my programs. So like yeah. if you want a course, sometimes I give some bonus, but now I'm thinking about, it, I literally don't have a single one-on-one client right now. I didn't even realize that, but I don't. It's all it's all group programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I actually really like one-on-one, but preparing for my maternity leave, I <laughs> cut that out of my offerings. And it's been interesting because a lot of people have asked for it and mm-hmm. I've had to turn them away. Yeah. Um, and we'll see if I... I, I probably will bring it back in some iteration after maternity leave is mm-hmm. done, but for sure, like the same as you, it'll be for very specific yeah. people and yeah. um, certain types of people that I really enjoy working with and particularly people who can take what we're talking about and really right. go run with it. Cause yeah. that's as much as I like coaching, I actually like consulting a little bit more. Totally. Um, yeah. So, you know, I don't want to have to like convince somebody to take action. I'm like, I want you to yes. be ready and just use what I'm giving you to like, right go explode your business. So, um, so cool. Well, that's, I feel like it's interesting to see where people came from because we've, um, we've had a lot of conversations with fellow mastermind Mm -hmm. friends over the last couple of weeks. And, um, it's a really common story to come from this, like, I don't want to call it desperation place, but some people's stories kind of were like, you know, I got to figure this out or I can't keep doing what I'm doing kind of thing. And so I find that inspirational because for me, I got into online business because I literally was like, I cannot imagine having a quote unquote real job. And I went into it straight out of grad school and it was never this, like, I have to figure it out or, you know, this is going to be my life or whatever. So, um, hearing what other people have come from, come from where it's like, not that your your moment seemed so rock bottom, but it sounded like you were kind of in this like yeah. something has to change and I don't want my life to keep going in this direction and affect my kids in a negative way. So yeah. um, I think that can be really helpful for people to hear because I feel like a lot of people tend to assume someone in your position got there because everything was going really mm-hmm. well for them. And I think right. it's really interesting when success like this comes from yeah. that like, 
you know, I have to make a change in my life. It can't keep going this direction. So that's cool. Um, So as far as the course creation process is concerned, when somebody is thinking about starting a course, Mm because I know you said you were doing it kind of like, you didn't really have a teacher explaining it to you. You just went and did it, which I feel like that... um, that was kind of how we did it in 2015. We actually, mm-hmm. I say we, the the person who created the course with me um, was my former business partner. And we both did Marie Forleo's B-School, okay. which okay. I think was like the program for yeah. learning like online business. Um, and so we created our course, but we kind of had that same, like, we're just going to figure it out. We don't really know what we're doing and we're just going to create this thing. And so... Um, Every time I've ever created a course in the last seven plus years, it's always been, you know, get it out there, see if people want it and mm-hmm. then make it. So, and, I, and that sounds like that's what you teach your clients how yeah. to do. Is that right? So can you, can you talk yeah. a little bit about that process? Cause I think as much as, as much as I teach that to my clients mm-hmm. inside of our programs, I think there's still this level of disbelief that that's really the best way to do it. And most people want to have all their T's crossed and I's dotted before they start selling something. And I would love to hear your perspective on why that's actually a bad idea to try to get everything created first. Yeah. I mean, so many reasons that's a bad idea. Number one, we all suck and we don't know what we're doing until we do. So like, there's this idea of like, if I can figure it all out, then I can do it with confidence. When like in reality, confidence comes from action. Um, One of the greatest lessons John Maxwell taught me that literally just changed my entire perspective on life is that the only way to learn is to fail. And the only way to fail is to take some action. So it's like, if you're not taking any action, you're not actually learning any less. You can pretend you are, right? You can be like, well, you know, like, what if I like really dig into this like sales copy? Okay. But like based on your own perspective, because that's not the perspective of your client and you don't know the perspective of your client until you start having some conversations, whether that's in the DMs, whether that's emails, whether that's putting out podcasts, you don't know what people do or don't respond to until you put something out there. Mm -hmm. So like you have to get started first by at least creating curiosity and finding out from people. Um, But you also you don't have the chance to make it better. So for me, I actually currently don't really do many evergreen programs. I do a lot of like live group coaching programs, but even when I do an evergreen program, I always do it live the first time. And the reason is I will write out an outline of what I think I want to teach and need to teach. But then along the way, people are like in the chat asking questions and I'm like, Oh, I didn't think about that. So here I am getting some of my very best ideas of what people are actually needing from the live feature that I would have never figured out on my own. Mm -hmm. So literally the back and forth with my customers, um, whether we're talking about the creation of it or even like into actually like teaching it live, the back and forth is what makes it everything that it is. Because I can't possibly know what you want and need. Mm -hmm. Me and you sit down and talk about it. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes people tend to forget that they, you know, as much as they think they know their ideal clients, in most cases, if not all cases, you're ahead of your ideal client, right? So whether you've been in their shoes or not, because some of my clients work with people that they have not experienced that particular health problem, which is totally fine. You don't have to be your ideal client um, avatar, but you know, if you're knowledgeable, if you're an expert in that area, it's so easy to forget what it felt like to not be an expert or to not know what to do. And you don't even remember what kind of questions would have come up. Like there's times where we get questions in our programs that I'm just like, I would have never thought to ever talk about that. And so I totally agree with you that, um, you could, I mean, and I'm not saying people shouldn't have any sort of, uh, and I, you're not saying this either, that they shouldn't have yeah. any sort of content strategy or right. idea about what they're going to teach. Um, but I totally agree with you that until you're actually teaching it and interacting with people who are the ones you want to help, you're not actually going to be able to create the best quality product. Yeah. So if you're if you're trying to wait for it to be perfect before you put it out there, you're actually not going to ever get there and, right. you know, Best case scenario, you put out something that's mediocre. Worst case scenario, you never put it out because you're never ready. Right. Or I would say even worse than that is to put it all out and realize nobody wants it. 
And you recorded what, like 32, I mean, some of the programs these days get a little bit ridiculous with like how many bonuses it off. Like imagine doing all of that and building the sales page and writing all of like the emails and like the welcome. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. For me, it's just like so chill if I can just do all of that as I go. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, so today we like, putting this out to 20 people to just see what they think about it. And then if they like it, cool. Tomorrow we'll make a checkout page. I don't even need a sales page because they told me in the DMs they want it, right? (laughs) You don't need a sales page. So I just need a checkout page. I can do that in like five minutes. That's all I got to do today. Cool. Then it's like, for me, it's like two months later that I'm building a sales page when I realized enough people wanted it that now it's like more time to like scale this thing and Mm -hmm. like put together ads and other... But like my warm audience doesn't need, I've never built a sales page for my warm audience ever Mm -hmm. because they don't need it. They can get on a Zoom call with me anytime and they just need to hear that the guy they already know, like, and trust is solving the next problem that they have. And for Mm -hmm. the most part, they're in. And, And I'm not saying that that's like the right or wrong way to do it. I'm just saying for me, like, oh my God, I can't imagine built, like landing pages, they infuriate me. I hate them. I can't stand them. <laughs> so, so to go through all of that just to find out this wasn't the right program for my customers, mm-hmm. I would be so mad. Yeah. Well, it, they're a lot of work. I'm trying to remember if we had a sales page for our first beta round of our NBA program because that program, I it was really funny. I was actually launching it off the back of affiliating for our coach James's BBD program. Yeah, so I yeah. had done this... I was not really doing a lot of business coaching at the time. I had a, a mastermind and a couple of one-on-one clients, but it wasn't mm-hmm. the main, it was really more for fun and, and enjoyment yeah. than um, being my main business. But um, I started as an affiliate for James in 2020 and grew this kind of instant audience of like 500 nutrition and mm-hmm. health professionals that wanted to learn how to grow a business. And as I was doing that, I was like, I could really help these people. Like I was answering questions and I was taking what they were learning from James's content and helping them apply it to a nutrition business. And I was like, there's a lot of stuff I could teach them that um, as much as I adore James and Mm -hmm. love BBD, there's, it's not specific for health businesses. So being able to take, you know, everything I've learned from the dozens of coaches I've worked with and say Mm -hmm. like, all right, what really matters for my audience and turn that into a, a course I literally wrote the outline for the program in a weekend and then pitched the outline. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have anything created. I was like, this is what I want to teach. Right. You know, we're doing a beta price, 50% off what it's going <laughs> to cost in the future. Yeah. And I think we had like 20 people pay and join. And then I gifted the program to my mastermind and a, and nice. a couple of one-on-one clients. Yeah. Um, and then I just like, I mean, I will say there's a little bit of that, that pressure that, I actually really benefit from when people are expecting, hey, we have a call scheduled in a week and this is the topic and now I got to create the actual content. And so that actually helps me get stuff done. Um, But, you know, it's funny because we have a lot of clients now who look at what the program is and they're like, oh, it's so like polished and amazing. And I don't know how I could ever create something like this. And I'm like, that is literally not anything like what it was when we first started it. Honestly, that just gave me an idea. I should start giving them access to the beta version yes. of the program to be like, this is what we created the first right. time. And that was like the 10th time I've ever launched a program in my career. So right. that was not my first program ever. So it's one yeah. of these things where I think it's really easy when you see other people who have been doing stuff for a while and, and yep. the level of production that their courses have and think, oh, that's what I have to create to sell right. mine. And not only is that something where it's like, it's not necessary, mm-hmm. but it's also, I think, actually harming the the evolution of the product yeah. because you're putting so much time and energy into finalizing it. And then possibly you're not going to be as open-minded to that either on the fly interaction that you were mentioning, right. or you go through it and and then you go back and look, okay, what do I want to do different next time? And then maybe yep. run it again live or, or yeah. officially turn it into a program. So yeah. um, I'm fully on board with what you're recommending as far as courses are concerned, because, um, you know, having done a lot of them myself, it's, yeah, definitely the most effective way to create a really good quality thing that also people actually want to buy. Yeah. Yeah. And also I will say this, like, um, this is what I like teach anyone that I'm helping with creating courses is like at the beginning, 
one of the easiest ways to make sales you will ever do is to actually not have something solid and go do customer research to find out kind of like what it is you should actually like have in your outline slash the name of it and stuff. Because the very second you actually have a program, then it's like, Hey, you know, I know we've been chatting for a little bit, whatever, like, would you be interested in my program? And now all of a sudden it's a sales conversation. Okay. Which still can work. Okay. Like at some point we'll have to do that. Right. But at the beginning, what's really cool, my favorite conversation in the world is, hey, I'm thinking about creating this new thing. um, And I don't actually have like all of the details put together. I just kind of have like an idea of what I want to teach. I was wondering if like you would tell me like some things you would want to learn and some results you would want to get. And then people are just like, oh yeah, sure. Like, let's have a conversation. Like people love to share their opinions, right? So it like actually makes sales so easy to go in not knowing the exact thing because then you can ask your most ideal clients for feedback and use that to piece together the perfect program versus going to your most ideal clients and be like, hey, I put together this program. Do you want to look at it? Like, no, I don't because (laughs) now you're trying to sell me, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, like that's still going to work for some people. I'm not saying that it can't work. Like obviously the rest of us have had to figure out how to do that beyond the creation, but you're, it's like you're missing this magical journey you could have taken your ideal clients with you on. Like where they got to be a piece of actually creating this thing, right? And then when like every person that I've messaged that to, I did this back in December when I was putting together a new program for uh, my life coach certification. So people that are coming out of the certification, I was like, hey, you know, if I did a marketing program for you, like, what would you want to learn? What kind of results would you want to see? Every single person that I asked that to paid $10,000 the next week because once their information got worked in, it was like, like, I have to do this. This is what I said I want to learn. Mm-hmm. This is what I want to get. And yeah, th- you literally custom made the program to me is what it felt like. So it'd be like, you know, if Nike called me up today and said, how do you want it to fit? What do you want it to look like? What colors do you want to have? And I, and I told them, and then they messaged me back the next day and said, hey, check it out. We, we made that shoe that you said would be the best shoe ever. I would be like, send me five of those right now because <laughs> I made it. I want to have a part of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about strategy with that because yeah. um, we have a lot of listeners that maybe have a smaller audience or just getting started. So if somebody is brand new and they want to have those conversations mm-hmm. with people, what would be a way that those conversations can happen? I mean, personally, I like to reach out to like three to five people that I would want to have in the program. And these are usually people that are already interacting with like whatever content that I'm putting out. Mm -hmm. So I don't like go to cold people with this. You know, I always go to the people that have the most amount of trust with me first. Anytime I'm creating something new or let's say it's an upsell, like I'm always going to go to the most engaged people first. Mm -hmm. Because that's, you know, they're already responding to what I'm putting out. They are, as far as I can tell, my most ideal person because they're engaging, right? And I literally, I mean, I literally just popped that question. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about creating a program around fill in the blank with kind of whatever like the just general topic is. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to have your full elevator pitch yet, right? It's yeah. just like, hey, I'm thinking about creating a new program around health and fitness or around meal prepping or around daily workout and accountability. And I was just wondering, um, like, I want to put together the program that is like right for my clients. Like, I want to make sure that this is everything my clients are actually needing right now. People love that because it's like you're thinking about them, not you, Mm -hmm. right? So I was just wondering if you'd be willing to answer a few questions, I would love to know, like, if you were to do a program like this, one, what are some things you'd really want to learn? Like, what would it like have to include for you to be interested? And then two, what kind of results would you want to get from it? And like, probably everyone listening to this would be like, but I already know those things, but you don't, (laughs) like you really, really kind of going back to what you were saying earlier, you know what they need to know and what they need to learn and what Mm -hmm. they need to do and what they should value getting at the end of the rainbow, right? But that's not any of the things they actually want to learn. It's not any of the things that they actually want to get. Like 
probably if you're a health and fitness coach, you would say that the most ideal thing is for someone to actually value their like holistic health, right? That's what people should value, but that's not what they value yet. Like (laughs) that's why they need your program. Mm -hmm. So if you go in there with like the most holistic approach, they're going to be like, what? I'm not looking for the most holistic. Which I have done before, as you guys, if you listen to my show uh, with any length of time, I've talked about my biggest launch failure that ever came Mm. from a program that was very much about (laughs) improving all areas of your health. So uh, I I can speak from experience about that. (laughs) Yes. So so I like I get their words, and then what I try to do. This is my very first profitable course, by the way was me taking all of the things from my one-on-one sessions and Mm -hmm. asking what are the three or four things people have asked the most amount of times? Let's just turn that into a program. Because if like 80% of my one-on-one clients are saying, these are the things that I need help with, a really good chance that's going to scale, right? So I take, you know, three to five people and I look for repeat answers. And I take those repeat answers and I turn those into what I call my cocaine promises. Um, so I put that name just to be dramatic. I love to be dramatic. <laughs> you, you know this about me. You've hung out with me. I love to be dramatic. I could call them like your, I don't know, extra flary promises. But it's, it's, it's kind of like taking what people say that they want and turning it into something that sounds more like a whole program. So like if someone says, I'll give you an example from like the research that I did for this last program. Someone was like, I want to know how it is you convert people in the DMs. So I took that and turned it into my exact scripts for how I close sales like crazy in the DMs. So I just took what they said and I made it sound a little bit more like a step by... Really, it's like a webinar title if you think about it, Mm -hmm. right? Like that'd be a great webinar title. So... The next person said, um, what was one of the other ones? Oh, one of the guys literally gave me like... (laughs) He wrote it for you? He he wrote my header line. He was like, I want the A plus B plus C equals new clients formula. I was like, oh my God, that's the best thing anyone has ever (laughs) told me. So my program became 626. My A plus B plus C equals new clients formula. He, He just wrote that for me. Because that's what he was, he wanted something that was that simple. Like, just tell me what are the specific ingredients. Mm -hmm. Um, I think another person said, um, oh, another person said how you um, get so many people on your webinars. So I said, like, my proven methods for, you know, filling up a Zoom room full of your most ideal clients and closing sales like crazy. So it's like, you kind of take what they say and add some of the other elements that you know. Like, she doesn't actually care how I get so many people on my webinar. She wants to know how I make so many sales with webinars, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's a little bit of a sequence. Get people on, but also close sales. So I just turn them into like these promises. And then when I'm talking to a new person, and they're like, hey, I heard you mention the 626. Or maybe, let's say maybe they like opt in for something for creating a course and I'm just reaching out organically. It's not really organically, but whatever. And I'm just like, hey, you know, saw you downloaded this. Wanted to see if you might be interested in my group coaching program. And like, yeah, I mean, that sounds cool. Like, what's that all about? And I literally, I'll send them an elevator pitch first. So it's just like my A plus B plus C equals new clients formula. You know, I work with people that are just getting started with their courses on how to grow it to six figures. And then if they're like, that sounds awesome, send me the details. I have a little file where I just copy and paste all of the cocaine promises. So it's like six to eight powerful promises that each one sounds like they're worth 10 grand. Mm -hmm. But like you read all of them and like literally every single response is, oh my God, that sounds like the most incredible thing I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, that's because it is. Like (laughs) (laughs) I took what I took all of your guys' needs and desires and things and it's not that I, I don't want to make it sound like it's a trick mm-hmm. because I do teach all of those things. The second it gets added to the cocaine promises, it gets added to the curriculum, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, it's true to me, but I needed their help to find out what the best program would be because yeah. I have three or four things that I'd really like to teach you and like seven or eight, uh, probably seven or 800 things that I also do 
that I sometimes forget to tell people about because I just do it automatically, Mm -hmm. right? But your audience, they see what is happening automatically. And they're like, you know, someone might be like, how in the world do you stay so motivated? I would have never added that into my course. You know what I mean? But if, but if five or six people said that, I'd be like, okay, cool. My exact formula, my exact morning routine that keeps me motivated every single day so I can show up and crush my work day. Like Mm -hmm. that's what I would turn it into. But it does need to be said by several people to make the cut. And that way I know that every single thing that's in there is something that hits home with every person that reads it. Mm -hmm. Well, and it sounds like if, if somebody were to ask for something that wasn't really in your wheelhouse to teach, I'm sure you wouldn't be like, well, I'm just going to promise that. And then like, right you know, not offer it or create some crappy version of it. So I'm sure you're looking at like, where do their desires and and needs line up with my expertise? Because even something like selling in the DMs, like, I'll be honest, I don't really do that. And so if somebody wanted me to teach that, I don't think, I mean, I could maybe figure it out, but it's not something that I do. So I probably wouldn't put it as part of either. Well, if I was going to add it, like if I had a lot of people asking for it, I would maybe think, okay, well, maybe I can find a guest to come and teach about that particular topic. So it's not that I would totally throw it out and be like, I'm not going to touch that, but I certainly wouldn't create like that as my core promise for the program. So it is something where, um, you know, I feel like being able to talk to people and get their ideas and hear from them what they want and then saying, okay, well, what of these things am I really good at? Like, what? how does this align with my skills? Um, that's where the best program gets created, right? Because it's a match for both people. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and, you know, like, I do feel like if you go to your most ideal people that are like your most engaged people, they usually know what your expertise are, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, my most ideal people would never ask me, how do you get so many story views on Instagram? Because they know I hate that. Like I hate <laughs> even having that, con- like I hate that conversation. Mm-hmm. So, And they all know that about me. So if I said, what would you want to learn from me in this program? It usually like immediately like counts out the things they know I don't want to talk about because they wouldn't imagine me even teaching that. So yeah, yeah I've actually not had that happen. Oh, well, that's but, good. But if I did get that kind of a response, I totally agree. It wouldn't make the cut because yeah. it does have to be aligned with what I, I'm passionate about talking about. Yeah. Well, and I would imagine a lot of that has to do with the effectiveness of your general content strategy. Yeah. Right? Because I think if people don't really know you or they haven't had a lot of opportunity to see what you're about. Yep they probably would say some stuff that you're like, I don't actually yeah. teach that. Like, I know, I mean, not not to say that this is because, you know, we don't put out content, but I've definitely had people ask if we teach, you know, social media. And I'm like, mm-hmm. we talk about messaging and how to apply it to social media. But if you're looking for like a grow your Instagram program, yeah. that's not us. Like I don't, I, most of my or clients anyone. that are, well, <laughs> There are. Not me, but but <laughs> all people I'll say who is, pretend to. <laughs> well, I mean, and and to be fair, I think sometimes I will say people, you have to kind of take some of it with a grain of salt because I think yeah. sometimes people think they want something that you're like, but yeah. why do you want that? Like the the Instagram story views, it's like, yeah, but what do you really want? Because just having story views doesn't do anything for anybody, right? right? So what does a story view actually give you? And then you get to decide, do I want to teach how to... Yep do that exact method to get the outcome? Or is there a better method that I can teach that would get that same outcome that has nothing to do with Instagram stories? So, um, so that would be another thing to be thinking about is like, you know, sometimes people say they want something and you're like, yeah, but do you really, like, do you actually want a bigger Instagram audience or do you want people that are buying your programs? Totally. Yeah. And and I will say one of my cocaine promises is how to grow a massive following um, of people that want to buy from you. But then mm-hmm. I get to decide, like, like they're going to be like, oh, a, a big following. So like Instagram, right? And But I didn't say Instagram. I just said yeah. a massive following. And then in mm-hmm. the program, I can help you to re-understand, like, what's the difference between a thousand Instagram followers and a thousand email subscribers? A really big difference, right? Mm-hmm. Like a thousand Instagram followers means you have like 900 bots, 60 people yes. that actually look at your page, right? And then like yeah. 
40 people who followed you, but will never look at anything. Right. Yeah. And you're also like, I don't know, we could go on, we could go on a whole Instagram chat if you wanted to, because (laughs) I just love to get on this soapbox probably too often, but Instagram is the most overrated thing on the planet. Most you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> thing on the planet, it is. And the yeah. reality is I do use it. Like if you go to my page, I have a ton of followers, um, but most of them are from other stuff that I've done. Mm-hmm. And that just happens to be the place where they like found me or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like most of my following comes from speaking for things like podcasts and live events, my webinars and my email list. Mm-hmm. Like all my ads and stuff that I run, people tend to also land on my Instagram page. But if you were like, hey, out of the million dollars a year you do, what percentage is Instagram? I would be like, I don't know, like half, like ha- like not half of the money, like half of a percent. Oh, like, I was like, like well, the, I don't know. Half like, sounds like a no, lot. <laughs> like half of a percent <laughs> yeah. of the money comes from Instagram and mm-hmm. everything else comes from emails and ads and live events. Like that's yeah. just what it is. Yeah. I look at Instagram as being like, I mean, there's definitely people out there that are doing really well with it. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but I look at Instagram as almost more of like a, a modern business card. Yeah. Like being able to have some content out there that people can go browse through and see what you're about and stuff is great. And I don't think people should necessarily like totally shun social media. And obviously Instagram also can run ads, so that can be helpful. Right, right, right. Um, But it is something where I think people put so much emphasis on it and it's not necessarily the the best thing to spend your time doing. And I've definitely noticed the bot thing lately has gotten insane. Like we, we actually just had a meeting with our team yesterday talking about our KPIs and seeing if maybe we need to like adjust what our, what our focus is. Mm -hmm. And one of our um, key performance indicators for our social media um, team member is new followers on Instagram, which at first made sense because it's like, okay, we're just looking at new audience growth, that kind of thing. And, and lately, like half of our new followers are fake. Like, and and it's just this thing where it's, I don't know what it is, why recently it's been such a big influx and they're very easy to spot because they all have like the name dot last name, both the handle and the name of the account. And they have zero posts, zero, like nobody's following them and stuff. Right. And I'm just like, is this even worth tracking anymore? Because there's nothing we can do to stop this influx of Mm -hmm. bots. And a bot following our account is meaningless to our business. So it's definitely been something we've been kind of like, all right, do we need to make some adjustments here? Because um, as much as I, you know, appreciate the opportunity to interact with people on Mm -hmm. Instagram, it's like, yeah, but at some point, is this even actually growing our business? So I totally agree with you about that. I actually did mine backwards of most people. So most people think you grow an Instagram following to make money. But for me, I found that I made way more money from just having conversations with actual humans. And like what takes most people like 30 days to try to get their thousand followers, you know, like even going back to when I was charging $40 a session, I could get a couple thousand dollars in the time it took someone else to get a thousand followers and no sales. Mm. So I actually built up my revenue first. And then when I had my revenue built up enough, I started looking into what I would call resume builders. So like now I have 100,000 followers on Instagram, not because that actually makes me money, but because since my money is taken care of, now it's about how do I establish myself as the authority and the expert so that when I spend $100,000 on ads and people go to my page to see who I am, they're like, oh, this guy's legit. I should probably sign up for that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like, to me, it's, it's so funny because to me, like, it's more of a scaling thing. Mm -hmm. Like I just put out a new book and it's a Wall Street Journal. That's not going to make me a million dollars. I already make my million dollars. That's going to build up my resume to help me get to my next million a little bit faster. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like you might not make a ton of money from selling the book, but having a book lends credibility and it's an opportunity for potential customers to learn right. before they buy from you. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, if you're looking at me and another person, and you're like, which one do I want to give my money to? If I have 100,000 followers and a Wall Street Journal bestseller, you're more likely to buy from me if the other person doesn't have that on their resume, right? Mm-hmm. 
but I would never, ever, ever spend that kind of money to get those kind of things on my resume without already having my money taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, don't go like adding flashy stuff before you get the money. Like Mm -hmm. go build your revenue first, Mm -hmm. right? And then when you have revenue flying in from all kinds of different directions and someone is like, oh, hey, by the way, for like 50 grand, we could put together a strategy to like grow your Instagram. Then it's like, well, okay, because I make a million, 50 grand invested could make me back a couple hundred thousand. Now it makes sense. And Mm -hmm. if, you know, if it doesn't do anything, that's okay. I had the 50 grand to invest. I can risk losing it. But Mm -hmm. like, I feel like otherwise you're risking all of your time and energy and effort into something that's not proven to make you extra money when you could have been doing things that literally are proven to make you money, like running challenges, you know, going and actually having conversations with people, hopping on Zoom to do consultations. All of these things are very proven methods for making money. Mm-hmm. And people are just like putting those off because building an Instagram following is like a little sexier. Yeah. But I also think that it's like avoidance. I think it's like avoiding the thing that could potentially like land a no. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's my thing that I'm always talking about is I think that we're all looking to stay busy. So we don't have to have that zoom call. So we can't screw it up and have somebody be like, Oh, I don't want to join you. And then our whole earth shatters underneath us because we're a failure and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. We'll just do things that would never make it work. So that we can avoid possibly accidentally failing where it like proves that it doesn't work. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like yeah. It's a lot more benefit. uncomfortable to pitch an offer to somebody directly and have them say no than it right. is to put an Instagram post out and not not get that many likes on it or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm curious because um, having been in business for well, really, I've been online for a decade. So I feel like stuff has changed a lot. Mm-hmm. As far as the last decade is concerned, we didn't even hardly use Instagram when we were starting. Right. Um, when you talk about having conversations with people, mm-hmm. where do you find these people if you're not mm-hmm. you know, having a lot of social media traction or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so two of my favorite things. I'll tell you my first favorite thing because it's the cheapest thing in the world, Okay is literally taking a picture of myself. That's like my favorite one. Well, I shouldn't say my favorite one. Let me take that back. Always listen to your audience. They will tell you what their favorite picture is. I thought you were going to say like your wife or something, her favorite picture. <laughs> well, no, I mean, that would that would probably not work quite as well because my For wife- your audience. <laughs> like is always like, I love this picture of you because you're just like being goofy and real. And, you know, so like I take the picture, like everyone has a couple pictures that you know, if you really, really, really need to get some likes, that's the one you put up, right? Like for me, sometimes it's me like wearing a nice jacket because I don't like dress up a lot. So like when I do, it's like, oh, wow, he's like dressed up. Uh, but I'll take like the best performing picture and I will literally Google motivational quotes. And I will just find a quote that's already viral that pertains to my messaging, okay? So like I wouldn't put one that said like girl power because that's not like my message, right? I'd find one that talks about, usually like I'm kind of like the weird guy that's still talking about hustle, but trying to make it like a healthy thing when you do it like in healthy boundaries. Like not hustling does not mean you work 24 hours a day It means like for three or four hours, you like bring the energy and like do some stuff, right? So I'd probably use a quote that kind of like grabbed that. But if I take my best picture with a quote that's already gone viral, and then I basically put it into Facebook, Instagram ads, I prefer Instagram usually because in Facebook, I can't really do anything with likes. If you like my post, I can't Mm. like do anything unless you comment. So on Instagram, I'll run it. You can get usually like, okay, if you're a guy like me, engagement costs 10 to 20 cents a person. If you're a girl, it's crazy. You can get your engagement five cents and below. Like I have some clients that are getting engagements for like one penny. Wow. One penny, okay? Then what I do is I take everyone who likes that post and I just send them like a canned message that says, hey, thanks so much for liking my post. I really appreciate it. I love to send my friends a free gift. If you want, let me know and I'll shoot something over to you. 
And that does not get a 100% response rate. Nothing in the world does. But what I'm doing is I'm taking what I used to do eight years ago, which was just friend request people like crazy on Facebook and then try to send them some type of a message. Before that would ban you from Facebook, right? exactly, (laughs) exactly. Now, I will say back then it was usually like friends or friends of friends or some Mm -hmm. type. So what I've done is I've taken that same principle and said, okay, can I do it in a way where they found me instead of me finding them? Mm Mm-hmm. Because if I found you, now it's weird that I messaged you, right? Well, and it's funny because you said you came from the network marketing background. And I feel like network marketing's kind of gotten an interesting reputation mm-hmm. because people, yeah. and I get this all the time, someone I haven't spoken to in 15 years, and they're like, hey, I wanted <laughs> to invite you to this online event. I was like, mm, no. So it's one of these things yeah. where I could see how maybe you know, five to 10 years ago, th- that was, that totally. would have worked it was because like people, yeah. And then now yep. they're like, I'm so tired of every single person talking to me yes. like that. So the way that right. you're doing it, like you said, they, they found you and it's not this awkward, like, yep. how did you get my information kind yeah. of uh, yeah. they, feeling? They found me and I make sure and say that at the beginning in case they don't remember liking my posts, right? It's like, thanks for liking my post. Um, and then I offer something free because like, mm-hmm. I always say free is never offensive. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean everyone's going to respond, but no one's ever mad about it. No one's ever like, what are you doing message me? You know, <laughs> but I would say like 15% of people are like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Like send it my way. And I actually go like a little bit deeper. So I will say, I love sending my friends a free gift. Um, would you mind telling me, are you currently working with people one-on-one or looking to launch courses? I'd love to send you over something free on how I've done that. And so like, I, I go a little bit more specific to where it's like, hey, I'm not just like spamming you with something. Like if you're doing either of these things, like I have free stuff for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people are usually like very thankful. Like actually, I am looking into launching courses right now. I'll take anything you have. And so I'll send them something free. And then I will literally follow it up and just say, so awesome. Like here's the thing. You can go like grab it here. Just curious. And I will just ask it like this. I'll say, have you ever heard of my 626 program? I just ask that. Just have you ever heard of it? I'm not like, by the way, would you be interested in three ways to blah, 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 blah. Here's the checkout link. Right, right. (laughs) I literally just ask if they've ever heard of it. And every single time people are like, either like, yeah, I already, you know, saw that in your stories. Like, it sounds amazing. Like, what is it? Or they're like, no, I have no clue, but that sounds like pretty cool. Like, what is that? So like, to me, it's all about like, just as curious, like, I'm just curious, like, have you heard of it? Like, if you come with like curiosity, people don't feel like you're trying to box them in versus if you do have that elevator pitch and that blah, mm-hmm. blah, like if it sounds too scripted, people can feel that. And so I kind of like very intentionally make it sound like I really don't care. I'm just like having a little convo with you. Um, and that almost always leads to having conversations about what I wanted to talk about, but just being a little bit more polite and a little less straightforward. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, what I do. I feel like, I don't know why this just came into my mind, but it kind of reminds me of like the kind of conversation you would have if you were in in line at a coffee shop or something and yeah. someone was like, hey, I really like your sweatshirt. You're like, oh, awesome. I actually designed yeah. this. Like, And then you just start talking about it, right? Yep. It's like... They, they came up to you. They said they liked right. it. You said, well, I actually sell these. Like, you yeah. know, have you ever heard of my brand before? And then it's, yep. you know, just like a conversation that nobody would be like, oh, why are you, why are you trying to sell right. me your sweatshirt? I just said I liked it, right? So yep. I feel like having that kind of energy is something that, um, you know, like you said, it's not going to have a 100% response rate, but yep. it certainly will have a higher response rate than if you're like going right. straight for the jugular when it comes to offering yeah. something. And, and no one, and again, like I said, no one's offended by it. Like no one's going to go unfollow me because I offered them a free gift. No one's going to send me hate. If they do, it's like me. probably it's good like, riddance, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's like my favorite way to teach people to just get started. And then obviously mm-hmm. there's other ways, you know, like putting out free resources, like workbooks and things like that, that have things on the back end. Um, but one of the lessons I learned, I guess about a year ago was in my process of like really scaling my business, I lost a lot of the one-on-one messaging kind of stuff. And so I grew my business to, you know, like a million dollars a year via all of the like emails, ads, sending people to live events, stuff, which is great. So awesome if you can have like less 
interaction <laughs> like, and, and make your business work. Um, but then I had a mentor who challenged me to like hire a sales team. I was like, uh, no, thank you. I do not want to train people. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't even know where to... But I was like, I paid this guy a lot of money. So if he's challenging me to do Gotta something, listen like, to I'm going to go try do it. it. Yeah. yeah. So I like, I like found someone that was like already closely connected to my network that had learned from me for years. And he was like super excited. Um, I got him and another guy that had already been working under me. And one of the things that we learned really quick, like, was that because I hadn't done much one-on-one conversations with people, people were just sitting around like chomping at the bit to have a conversation. So I had kind of like streamlined everything to where it was like, it almost made me like not accessible at all. Mm. And the second I added back in a little bit of access, like I think my sales team did like 60 grand in the first month on top of all the stuff that we had going on. Mm -hmm. So it was like 60 grand a month had just been sitting there, no one doing anything with it because these were people that for whatever reason just needed somebody to say, hey, I see you. Are you interested in what I have to do? You know, And, and I think so many times because that's been done so sleazy by so many people, we think that one-to-one sales is sleazy. And the reality is for most people listening to this podcast, if you don't have as much money to spend on ads like me and Laura do, if, if you don't have these scaling things, okay, like you can't just skip like the day-to-day work and just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go take out a $50,000 loan so I can throw it at my business and pray to God I can figure, like that's not the best thing to do, right? The best thing mm-hmm. to do is to like, go grab what's already sitting there. And I think so many times it's like, we learn all these sophisticated things about like digital marketing, which is great. And I'm so thankful for it. Mm -hmm. And we forget that there's just like this really easy way to still go do it. That still works. As long as you're not weird and sleazy about it for all of you, there's money just sitting out there that you can just go get right now. If you just say, okay, how would I want to be talked to? You know, like, I'm not going to talk like a weirdo. I'm not going to go like, like, how would I want someone to approach me? Okay. I'm just going to do that and go approach people. And if someone is rude or weird about it, like, that's fine. For me, I've always been like, if I'm saying what feels good to me and they're offended by it, that's them projecting. Maybe they got 10 other messages from other people that were sleazy. So they're assuming I'm sleazy And I'm like, I'm not sleazy. I don't think I am. So I'm not going to accept that, right? Like, (laughs) that's what you say about me, but that's not what I, as long as I feel good about what I'm putting out to the world, like, I'm not going to let what anyone else says about me affect me. Mm -hmm. Like, if my wife sees that I have a good heart, you know, kids are kids, so they think I'm crazy. But as long as my wife says I have a good heart and like my three or four closest friends, then I'm good. I don't need anybody else to like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've had, we've had, uh, People send some pretty nasty responses just because of the number of emails that we yeah. sent. And I'm like, right. there's an unsubscribe button. Like, <laughs> nobody's forcing you to listen to this. So it's, uh, you could be the most kind hearted, like, I just yeah. want to help you. I just want to give you this information. Yep. And it's like, you put too many in- emails in my inbox. So now I'm going to send you a nasty message and talk right. about how awful you are. It's like, okay, no, no worries. Um, yeah, I feel like, the whole one-to-one conversation. I mean, that's how I built my business. It, mm-hmm. Honestly, all of this like scaling sales page, launching, all of that has only been a thing that I've done, you know, in the last few years. Most mm-hmm. of my business was built with sales calls. And yeah. it's like, I actually really like them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do as many anymore because we just don't have a lot of programs that demand a sales yeah. call from me at this yeah. point. But I really do think, especially with all of the, automations and, you know, yep. things that are, that are being created now to make sales, there is that, you know, almost rebound effect of people wanting to talk yeah. to a real person. And, and like you said, yep. it doesn't necessarily have to be you, Yeah, the business owner, the CEO, like if you're yep. at a place where you can hire a team to help with that, we have, yep. um, one of my key team members does our sales calls and we'll probably bring on more people next time. Cause she was, Very, very busy on our last launch, but, um, you know, we have somebody else doing those for us during our launch Mm because I want people to be able to talk to somebody if they want to. And, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be me because if I'm trying to 
be the one in front of the big audience. I have to have my energy and my focus totally. on that. But um, but I think sales calls are really great and they can be very effective. And yep. um, I don't I don't really understand why people want to avoid them. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess I understand because <laughs> it'd be nice to be like, I can do the same level of business without having to ever get mm-hmm. on a call. But it's like, especially when you're first starting, I just don't think yeah. that's realistic. And and I also think you learn so much from a sales conversation. Even yep. if they don't end up buying, like you just get right. so much great um, ideal client or maybe non-ideal client information mm-hmm. where you yeah. can then apply that to your marketing in the future. So I'm definitely a proponent of that, especially for new business owners. Um, well, Josh, this has been so fun getting yeah. to chat with you about all this. And what would be like if you just wanted to lay down like one action step, especially for our mm. listeners who have never created a course before and they're like, yeah. I just got to get started. What would be the first thing that they should go do at the end of this episode? I mean, the very first thing you have to do is message five to 10 people <laughs> that you're already closely connected to. Okay. And, and by that, I don't mean brother or sister. I mean, like, via like people following your content or already buying other things, whatever that is. And just tell them you're thinking about putting together a program. Thinking about putting together a program. I wanted to get input from some of like the people that I, you know, respect the most. Would you be willing to tell me, you know, what you would want to learn and what kind of results you would want to get? Mm-hmm. Just if you go put that out to five to 10 people, you get a very heavy response rate. Like it's not going to be like the typical invite where only like 10% of people respond. Everyone will respond and you'll be so blown away by what they're saying because some of it is stuff that you are already passionate about. So it's going to be this positive affirmation for you of like, okay, I'm on the right track. And then some of it's going to be stuff that kind of like we talked about earlier, you just completely forgot people even need. And I think it's going to blow you away with compassion for these people. Because like, again, we've grown, right? We forget how hard it is for someone that's trying to take that first step or that step, whatever that step is that you're wanting to help people with. We forget how hard that is. Mm -hmm. And we forget like, you know, I'll message people and some of the stuff they say, I'm just like, oh yeah. Like I had already written that off as like so basic. Mm -hmm. Like that wasn't going to be in my content at all. That's just like super basic. But then the way they're saying it, I can't help but like have compassion for them and be like, oh my God, yeah, I forgot. Like people actually do care about that and they really Mm -hmm. do need that. We have to find a way to include that. And I just think it'll be so powerful for you to just like look over people's answers and just see like, okay, like I really am, I'm going in the right direction Mm -hmm. and these people really need help. So like, okay, that I think to me, that always gives people the affirmation they need to go take the next step. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And for people who want to transition from one-on-one to group, I feel like yeah. just talking to your current one-on-one clients, yep. it's a great way to do that. Yeah. They don't necessarily have to buy it. I mean, I've had clients before where I gifted them yeah. the, the group program as like a thank you for being a client, join us. And ironically, they're, they're usually the ones that don't end up coming to any of the calls because they're <laughs> like, I already got you on one-on-one. I don't need the yep. group. But, um, but even just that, that um, opportunity to learn from them, you know, yeah. what, either what are you looking for or what's been really helpful, just right. those kind of conversations to get things rolling is such a great yeah. idea. So, well, Josh, this has been so helpful and informative and I've loved chatting with you about this. It's um, it's funny. I, th- I feel like we have a very similar timeline as far yeah. as course creation is concerned over the last, what, seven-ish years. So yeah. it's fun to see how things have changed and also how a lot of stuff hasn't changed because right. at the end of the day, people are still people, right? So yeah. if our listeners want to learn more from you about course creation, what can they do next after they've messaged those five to 10 people? Yeah. After you've messaged your five to 10 people, uh, you may now have permission to, um, (laughs) I think you you mentioned you want to put in the show notes, but I have a a free workshop that you can go through on how to create your first course. And it kind of walks you through most of the stuff that we talked about today, um, but in just like a very guided thing. So that like by the end of the workshop, you'll have your whole course like written out and Mm -hmm. ready to actually put out to the world. Okay. It's not going to be a sales page. It's not going to be a whole funnel. It's going to literally be like a course that's ready to sell. And I talk a little bit in the workshop about like how you will create it. Like as you go based on uh, these three pillars that I'll teach you how to kind of like put together, like for your content mapping 
And I mean, you'll have you'll have like six months worth of content after like two hours because everybody does. They just mm-hmm. haven't taken time to organize it, right? Yeah. So it's it's a it's a quick workshop that will teach you how to organize it all, structure it all, so that you have the confidence to go sell it. Even though everything is not done, you at least have all of the pieces there that you feel confident in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's exactly what we did to create NBA was yep. outline, pitch it, and then make it as the students were going through it. Totally. So it's yeah. my favorite way to course create. Um, and that's available at your website, right? Yeah. They can go to joshcoats.com. And if you just scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's like three free resources. So one of them will be how to create your first course. Um, joshcoats.com, scroll to the bottom. Awesome. And we'll make sure to put not only Josh's main website, but also the um, checkout for that free course in the um, the show notes. So if you guys go to lauraschoenfeldrd.com and search for Josh's name, you'll be able to find it and go check it out and let us know how it goes. And it sounds like Josh likes DMing. So if you want to let him know what, yeah, if you want to let him know how that went for you after you did the workshop, I'm sure he would appreciate your feedback. So anyway, thank you so much, Josh. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. And thanks to all of you for hanging out with us for the last hour. We'll see you here next week on the Fed and Fearless podcast. Take care, everybody. Hey there, Laura here again. If you're anything like the hundreds of health and nutrition entrepreneurs that I've worked with over the past few years, you want to create an efficient, structured, and organized online health office that saves you time, maximizes your impact and your income, and provides a great experience for your clients. But maybe you've been told falsely that all you need is free tools like Google Calendar and Google Drive to make that happen. Or maybe you know that you need to use a client management software like Practice Better, but you feel overwhelmed trying to figure out how to set it up in a way that actually saves you time rather than wasting it. Either way, the fact is you need a well-oiled client management system, one that works for you like a team member if you want to have a successful online health and nutrition business. And in my brand new free training, I'm going to teach you the six essential steps to set up practice better for a more profitable and efficient virtual health and wellness business. I'll give you the step-by-step system for setting up your client management software that will get you out of the day-to-day admin work and back into the role of the high-level health and nutrition professional where you belong. I'll also show you how my client, Jackie, used these exact principles to help her make over $200,000 in revenue in her first full year of business, while also preparing to become a first-time mom. And by the end of this 60-minute training, you'll finally know the best way to create an efficient, structured, and organized online health office that saves you time, maximizes your impact and income, and provides an amazing front-end experience for your clients and customers. To get access to this exclusive brand new training, go to practicebettertraining.com and select the training day and time you'd like to attend. And don't worry if you can't make any of the times listed, we'll be sending the replay to all registrants. So just be sure to look for an email from hello at lauraschoenfeldrd.com to get your personal link to join the training. Having a well-organized client management system is a non-negotiable when it comes to building a financially successful online health business that doesn't burn you out. And I can't wait to show you the exact steps to doing so in the fastest and most efficient way possible. Go to practicebettertraining.com to sign up now, and I look forward to seeing you on the training.